All right, so check this out. The headline, Baltimore police aim to pilot three citywide spy planes made by an Ohio company, Persistent Surveillance Systems, starting in May 2020. Oh just God. off of that. Now, I don't mean to be clickbaity headline grabby guy, but just off of that, what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> that just sounds like Orwellian. I love how like they put that out and just expect people like – I feel like if that's like a real like non-scare tactic thing, it's just a straight like psyop because like it's – it's like trying to condition people to be like, hey, well, get ready for like the eye in the sky 24-7. Funny, funny you say that because they actually secectly did it like a year ago. Oh, God. They did like a little pilot program. In Baltimore? Yeah. Pilot no, program. No, no pun telling intended. You. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> it's it was, actually without no telling, pilot but, program. Without telling drones, anybody. So. Oh, jeez. Make it even worse. Yeah, just completely remove the human moral like aspect, you know, any kind of moral responsibility or justification. Yeah, if you dig in deeper into it, of course, there's a political angle with like the mayor and and the the companies and where this so the funding's coming from and who's building the planes and all. Why this are sort they of thing. doing this specifically? I mean, you and I both know crime. why they're doing quote it. unquote crime. Okay, so they're presuming that they can fly these planes up and then catch like crimes in the act or like before they're happening. Or well, well dude, what they want is the fucking the just the eye in the sky. They want the Winter Soldier. Uh, the freaking, <laughs> fucking pre-crime, the, the flying, sniping freaking, people. Yeah, the Minority Report slash freaking yeah. um, Philip um, K. Dick's worst nightmare. Yeah, no kidding on steroids, like flying, um, bio scanning, hover cr- carriers and here's, that can attack here's people from. Interesting air. quote: We are aware of no local law, state law, federal law, including federal constitutional law, that imposes any impediment on the pilot program that the commissioners described. Well, duh, because it's such a brand new like field as far as like drones and like domestic. And that means we should do them. it. What's that? That means we should do it. Right. I mean, there's no law against me lasering how this man, dude in the brain. How, man, how like human being, like typical human being is that? Or whatever. Like, why are you doing that? Because I can. Eating some no one told me I can't. pretentious fruit, like a pear. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real though, right? It's just like, because I feel like playing God, basically. That's terrifying though. I don't know what I like more. A couple of like three little like drone airplanes flying around, collecting everybody's like data and information stuff. Or like a couple of giant Orwellian blimps floating around with little like command centers up on there like just beaming their little snooping devices into freaking people's houses like it's fucking v for vendetta Mm. there's a 23 percent uptick in discussions regarding politics in sector 12 yeah and the police commissioner used to say he was skeptical of the planes and like you know it's unproven and everything i understand and then there's a lobbying campaign and suddenly he's like yeah you know actually i'm i'm all for this suddenly for it i don't know this big envelope with all this Money inside of it just kind of made its way onto my desk. And goddamn it, I just suddenly feel a lot better about this whole drone thing. I feel way more secure. Yeah. And the ACLU's fighting it. And obviously, some people are upset. Yeah. We'll see if it even launches. So, again, it's like... Unintended again. (laughs) How can you even, like, justify that? Like, what are you even looking for? What are you using, really? Are you using, like, video and audio? Yeah, video. Yeah. You're literally using, like, like telescopic video lenses that can, like, zoom in on, like, a street corner to see, like, presumably, like, a drug deal or a shooting or a robbery or... Yeah. Well, more surveillance like and, and more angles that you can't... information on that shit so that they can try to sell that idea and that concept to me as, like, a safe alternative to just, like, In a you perfect know, world work. where there was no... Well, obviously, there wouldn't be crime in a perfect world, but... Right. In a semi-perfect world <laughs> where nobody would use this for any other reason and there wouldn't be... No nefarious reasons, yeah. no abuse of power. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It'd be great. Yeah, yeah, it would be. Yeah. And that's and that's always the double-edged sword of technology, right? Is like adopt this because of all of these great things that it's going to bring you. But like that like the manifesto is talking about, it's like, well, you got to give up something too. Mm. Cuz technology can also be used, you know, obviously the exact same technology can be used against you. This and I bring I bring it up every time, but like this bipedal freaking super strong Hyd- you know, hydraulic power. Boston robot. mechanics. Yes, dude. Can, you know, <laughs> lift whole chunks of like. Tell you know, me you don't watch you. that and just get oh something God, in so you, some deep seated thing. Oh is like that's really unsettling. And you know how we were talking about like epigenetics? Mm. That's going to be a thing, bro. Is that like oh, a, fear, a, a, a genetic fear of, fear of, machines, of robots? Dude. Oh, yes, man. dude. Once once shit goes really bad for a long period of time, human beings are going to have like a genetic memory implanted on them forever, species wide. Going like, mm, how smart is this machine? Yeah. Is it like full on? Artificial intelligence? No? Okay, good. In a great world, we'd have destroyed. we'd have RoboCop. But <laughs> Dead or alive, you're coming with me. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just have to see. But that is a good jumping off point because I assume that one of us was probably going to say this uh, during the conversation. But you know that... <laughs> no more racial epitaphs, Mark. <laughs> you're putting chains no on me, bro. No more F words. No more... 
But, you know, the, the Benjamin Franklin quote that usually gets used with this sort of thing of uh, those who give up essential liberty to purchase mm. a little temporary safety deserve, deserve neither. neither liberty or safety. Right. Side note about that thing. I actually looked up the quote because I wanted to get the, what the actual quote was. Is he not the one who said it? Or No, he said it. Okay. But what's interesting is he wasn't talking about the sort the of things thing that, that people make references to. Right. Huh, which, is, which is usually technology. So I don't think he's talking about technology. I think he's talking about like. No, of course not. Okay. I feel like he's talking about how he was actually talking vigilance. about a tax dispute huh. between the, the Pennsylvania General Assembly and a uh, family of the colony who ruled the Pennsylvania colony from afar. Pro taxation for, for security purposes. Oh. So it's kind of getting warped. But the point sort of remains that's, – that's an interesting thing to bring up because I feel like the point sort of is moot about the context. Why was the talking context. about liberty in that context? If you don't have a way to protect your freedom, you won't have freedom? Kind of. Well, shit, he's right on that. If that's what's fucking, if that's what he's, if that's what he's trying to say. Otherwise, it's just words. <laughs> if there's not like a threat of force behind it, then it's just like, oh yeah, what will you do about it? We will write you a very angry letter explaining how angry we are with you. <laughs> and if you don't do anything, we will write you another letter explaining how angry we are with you. I know people like to shit on NPR, but there, there was a, good, there's a good. It's uh, only because their about. voices talk. And sound like the thing you do <laughs> when you're going into a coma. <laughs> this is NPR. Sponsors brought to you in park by Some Guy Foundation. <laughs> had a good article. Some on. Guy Foundation fucking specializes in some other shit. I'm sorry, I'm done. <laughs> they did a, a a little interview with like a historian, and they you know he went through and, and that was his point, gave the context. But word. it's a good discussion to have because what I'm getting down to is this: how important. Is the original context of which somebody says something? Mm, not you take really. that. You it take that. Really matter, actually. Right. You take that giving up liberty for security. Mm, deserve neither. Both. Right. That's still true, even in the context that people use it in. Right. Right. Not even if and it was the, like its original intent. The whole reason we use a quote is because it's it's sort of like a like a point. I don't want to use the word meme, but it totally is a meme. It's, yeah, it's a cultural fucking. Yeah, yeah, totally. Which again, <laughs> maybe kind of serves my point is people use memes nowadays as something else. Some, something for us to reach out and grab and, and some, something to anchor the conversation in of. It's a, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's a cultural, um, a universal cultural it's a understanding. Yeah. Yes. That everybody can understand the reference to. Mm -hmm. And from that like common beginning, you can like build off of that rather. But what's interesting is the part of the strength of the quote comes from who said it. True. So Absolutely. you can't completely ignore the context. That's true. If it was just some guy, you'd be like, "Hey, he's totally right," but you know, yeah. he's just some guy. But I mean, if how like many great founding fathers? You're like, "Oh shit!" How I mean, many? Yeah, exactly. It holds all this other weight to mm -hmm. it. How many great quotes are from anonymous? Yeah, good call. That dude. Yeah, Who that knows? dude. Yeah, random. Know his yeah. shit, man. <laughs> For real. <laughs> he's like, he's like a time traveler. And I he swear. was like, he had one name, which is so pre his time. Yeah, you know, I know. Like it's like before Prince. Madonna or yeah. Cher. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. So cool. Anonymous. That's such a cool name. Thanks, dude. Hey, I'm supposed to be anonymous. <laughs> Throw the switch, Mr. Garrison. <laughs> uh, even then, I was going to say, unless you were like there to hear it and you're making a direct reference to what was literally said, not even just like the, the quote, but like the, the, the topic that you were talking about. Yeah. Even then, it's not really because when you have when you now deliver that to another person. And, and talk about it if they're not if they're not 100 percent on the exact same social page that you are i.e they were there and experienced the exact same yeah. experience that you had they're going to interpret it their own you know that's just how the human mind works man you you're getting I mean? into it, and even another point is that history the only true history that you can actually be you know super relied on is being there right as soon as something happens it's remembered a thousand different ways by a thousand different people yep secondhand knowledge is super shady yeah like, not, that's not even going into, you know, who controls the present, controls the past. Yeah, no kidding. Another More great Orwellian quote. stuff. Yeah, totally. 